Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have an interesting shape for which we need to find the centroid. Notice that it's a triangular wedge, but it has the front part missing. How do we find the centroid of the remaining part? The best way to do that is to assume that the wedge is intact. We find the centroid of the intact wedge, and then we subtract the centroid of the missing part. Again, the very same setup as before. Let's go ahead and try to do that. First of all, we need to identify the volumes. So one will be the total wedge and two will be the missing part. To find the total volume of the wedge, we take the length in this direction times the height divided by two because we only need to take half of that and we multiply it times the thickness. So that would be one half times eight, which is four times four, which is 16, times two, which is 32. That would be the volume of the total wedge, not just the portion that we have remaining, but it would be the total wedge. The volume of this portion right here, again, would be half the face, half the area of the face. That would be half of two, that would be one, times one, times two, that would be two, but we need to write a negative two because we need to subtract that volume from the total. Now to find the x, the y, and the z coordinates of each of the portions here. To find the x coordinate of the triangular slab that would be one third the distance from the base to the height, it would be one third the height. Since the height is eight, one third of that would be eight over three. Remember, we do that for the whole wedge, not just this portion right there. The center of this portion would be six plus one third the distance from there to there. That would be one third two or two thirds that would be six and two thirds. Six and two thirds would be the distance to the centroid of the missing piece. Six for this distance, two thirds the distance would be one third times two, which is two thirds from there to there. For the y coordinate, that would be in this direction. Again, it would be one third the distance from the base to the height. The height is four, one third of that would be four divided by three. And for the missing piece, the height is one, one third of one would be one third. In the z direction, both would be the same, it would be halfway from there to there, it would be one for the total wedge and one for the missing piece. Now we're ready to multiply. Multiply the x coordinate times this, eight times 32, that would be 256 divided by three. For the y direction, it would be four thirds, that would be four times this, that's half as much, that's uh, 128 divided by three. In the z direction, it would be one times 32. For the missing piece, notice we're multiplying time with negative volume. Six and two thirds, let's see if we can write that better than that. Six and two thirds is equal to 18 plus two, that would be 20 thirds. Let's rewrite this as 20 thirds, makes it easier to multiply. And 20 thirds times negative two would be minus 40 thirds. One third times this is minus two thirds. And one times a minus two is a minus two. Now we can go ahead and add these together. For the volumes, 32 minus 2 is 30. That's the net volume. For the sum here, it's 256 minus 40. That's 216 thirds. 216 thirds. And it turns out that 216 is divisible by 3. 3 goes into 210. That's 70 times. That would be 72 times. This is equal to 72. When we add these together, we get 126 divided by 3. 126 is also divisible by 3, that would be 42. And finally, 32 minus 2, this is 30. We're now ready to find the x, y, and z coordinates of the centroid. For the x coordinate, we take this value, which is 72, and we divide it by 30. For the y, oh, I have x twice, don't I? This must be y coordinate, and this must be z coordinate. Ah, good thing I caught that, x, y, and z. For the y direction, we divide 42 by 30. And for the z direction, we divide 30 by 30. That's an easy division. That's equal to 1. 72 divided by 30, I think that's 2.4, but I want to make sure. 72 divided by 30, it's indeed 2.4. And 42 divided by 30 is equal to 1.4. So these are the x, y, and z coordinates of the centroid of the wedge with the missing tip at the front. 
Let's see if that makes sense. In the x direction, if it was halfway from there to there, it would be 3, but it's more heavily loaded than the front, so it should be less than 3. That makes sense. In the y direction, from 0 to 4, halfway would be 2, but more of it is at the bottom half, so 1.4 makes sense. And in the z direction, 1 is definitely correct. Uh, we could have known that because if these are all one, of course, then the centroid of the whole object must be one as well. And that's how we do that. Again, take the centroid of the whole object, subtract from that a portion of it that gives you the centroid of the remaining part. And that's how we do that.